Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today another exciting hardware unboxing video for you. Today we're taking a look at the Thrustmaster Captain's Pack, the TCA Captain's Pack or if I got the, the name right it's called the uh, TCA Captain Pack Airbus Edition. So very excited to bring this one uh, to you. Thrustmaster kindly sent this over. Here you can see me struggling to unbox it and finding it in several layers. Um, a bit like pass the parcel so we do eventually find our way in after my terrible unboxing technique this is not what we normally do on the channel um, but yeah it's uh, a pack that includes the hardware from the first officers pack plus the add-on set so a lot of controls we're going to look at it in this video i've been using it for a few months already my own setup so we'll be looking at the um the uses and how I found it. But at the end of this video, most excitingly, there'll be a giveaway of this exact set, this TCA Captain Pack Airbus Edition. So here you go, very exciting. It's a great prize. Thank you to Thrustmaster for sending it over. And at the end, uh, I'll provide the link that you can use to go and, uh, and enter for your chance to win it. There'll be one winner of this pack um, and uh, all the rules will be on the website. It will unfortunately be UK only, because I am, of course, in the UK and I have to pay for shipping and customs and so on. So that's the easiest way for this one. Um, but if this goes well, maybe we'll do some more in the future, some different sort of giveaways of different things. We'll, we shall see. So here it is. Here's the box. As you can see, includes the joystick um, and the throttle quadrant plus the add-on pack. And then if we open it up inside, definitely a step up in the, the packaging for this one. A very nice uh, box included. Remove before flight, an excellent little detail. And then if you do remove that, you find yourself looking at the, the actual captain's pack itself. Up here we have the little uh, quote, which is very nice. A nicely packaged uh, Thrustmaster box. I, I was very pleased with that. Here it is. You've got the full set. Now, I won't be unboxing this one. This is the, the prize for the lucky winner. I'll be leaving this alone. Um, or mostly alone and I'll be using the set that I've been using so I've used the first officers pack uh, plus the add-on which is effectively what you're going to get with this set here this is now released it's on the Thrustmaster store as of the 12th October uh, it was certainly available or very soon available for pre-order so there's the box with a complete set inside what we're going to look at is the one I've been using and I'll talk about how I've got it set up some of the features I like uh, and some of the things that I found maybe a bit more challenging as we go through it as you can see, here's my uh, first officer side stick set up in the right hand configuration. So I've got the red autopilot disconnect button on the left. It is ambidextrous, so you can swap it over. Here is my throttle set uh, with the add on. So, as I said, all of this is in the captain's pack included. I've got this set up for throttle one and two, those engine one and two stickers. You can add those as three or four if you want to add more throttles later. All very nice. Uh, and we've we have talked about them in the original unboxing, but it's still uh, for a bit of a refresh and a bit of a extra experience now I've used them for a while we'll talk about them as we go through the video so starting at the bottom right we have the parking brake switch this is great it's worked in all of the add-ons I've used so far which is good news um, it doesn't lift up like it would in the real aircraft but it does feel the same shape as the one in the real aircraft which is great it's just a little bit smaller made of plastic but I believe the one in the aircraft is as well this is the rudder trim very useful for engine failure situations it's the wrong shape of switch, but it is a similar sort of Airbus style switch, so I'll, I'll let them off on that, with a reset button next to it. Very useful. We use the reset button every flight in the real Airbus. We reset the rudder trim to zero, because after a flight, it can sometimes be left with some trim in. This is the flap lever. Uh, it has a little panel underneath that in the real aircraft you lift up to move, but that doesn't move on this one. But the lever is the same shape otherwise, and it does include that little shape lever, which is quite nice, but it just slides backwards and forwards. There is an option to have detents and no detents, so some airplanes you might not want it, for example the Twin Otter. But in this Airbus we have four detents, we have 0, 1, 2, 3 and full, and you can set those detents up. So that's great that that works, I really like it, and obviously very compatible with the Airbus. On the middle section we have these two buttons. Now on the real aircraft these are engine fire lights, they would light up with fire. You can't press them, they don't do anything, but they just show you which engine is on fire. Um, but in this they are assignable buttons very useful i for example use them for things like setting reverser in the dc6 or toggling the water rudder in uh, float planes so nice to have the extra buttons available back to the uh, engine master switch here so you can move it on and off in the real aircraft you have to lift it up to go over a gate but in this it's a switch that flicks forward and backwards feels quite sturdy i haven't had any issue with them breaking off or i haven't been too worried about them so i've been quite pleased with those now onto the big one, which is the thrust levers. These are really good, and mainly I've been pleased with them because they're so functional. 
What does that mean? Well, it's because they have the detents available. So you've got reverse, you've got idle, you've got idle reverse, you've got climb thrust, flex, MCT thrust, and toga thrust. So here you can see the reverse action. That little lever feels very good. It's functional in the same direction as the thrust levers on the Airbus. The Airbus levers don't lift up or anything. They they just sort of slide back like that when you when you unlock them. So yeah, really nice, works really well. And then you can lock out the reverser like this to give you the full range back if you don't want the reverse detent assigned there so that might be if you want more control over the throttles in forward motion but i don't usually use this unless i'm using an aircraft without reverses for example uh, the dc6 over the other side this one um, you can also lock out of course in the same way so you you remove that reverse section so very flexible and in my left hand throttle i actually have removed the detent so they have detents at each of those points so idle reverse forward idle flex mct uh, uh, climb thrust and toga but i don't always use that so uh, in some aircraft like the 737 i want the full range without those detents getting in the way the way i've done this in the end is i've actually got one of the throttles with a detent and one without and that way there's enough of a feel that i can feel where the detents are so i can put them into the the detent when i'm flying the airbus but it's not so resistant that i end up getting uh, confused if i'm trying to fly an aircraft without it so i end up uh, being able to fly 737 or the airbus without changing around all the, the detents so I, I find that quite a nice compromise between the two that's just my method but you can obviously do what you want the detents can be completely removed or added back in as you see fit those buttons at the side the red buttons are the auto thrust disconnect i've got those assigned in my simulators works great in all the simulators i use it in so very happy with that though that's what they do on the real aircraft so they're both one on each side both work just like they do on the real aircraft so very nice to have that the materials, by the way, are all plastic. All of the things you touch, there is some metal involved, but they're all plastic, uh, the bits that you actually interact with. In the real aircraft, some of these switches, for example, the engine master switches would be metal, but in this case, they're plastic. So that's uh, that's just how it is. It's also not full scale. So the thrust levers and speed brakes and so on are slightly shrunk. The side stick is a bit more of a normal scale to the, the real aircraft. So that's, uh, that's sort of the size difference. So they're, they're slightly smaller. Quite handy, though, if you're going to use it like me up free on the desk. They don't take up as much room as they could otherwise. And the key difference being that they are just more functional for the detents. Having the detents in the thrust levers is such a crucial part of flying the, uh, the Airbus around. As we move on to the front here, it's a USB-C cable that plugs into the, the one in the center, the main throttle quadrant, and then the add-on packs don't require any separate plug-ins themselves. There's a TFRP plug for your rudder pedals if you're using those, but I use a separate set of rudder pedals. I actually use a, um, a Logitech set of rudder pedals. And then you've got the friction adjusters, those little arrows with plus and minus. I've got most of my frictions turned right up. The real aircraft, the controls are a little bit heavier. So to give it that slightly more realistic feeling, I have the frictions turned up um, in order to make it just a little more easy for me to sense where the controls are um, obviously you don't want them too loose or it, it just slides around so yeah that's how i've got it set up if they include the little allen key you need to adjust that and the phillips head screwdriver as you can see mine are set to engine one and two but you can also set it to three and four if you wanted to have four airbus engines for example on an a340 or maybe an a380 other aircraft that we might see in simulators or we will be seeing in simulators uh, at some point in the near future so that's uh, that's what those uh, those options are for now on the left hand side we have the next part of the add-on set this is the auto brake selector it's BTV stands for brakes of vacate and you've got disarm low two three and uh, I think the other one is max these are not quite accurate to the real aircraft on the short haul Airbus they're more for the long haul Airbus we have uh, the low medium and max on the A320 but this selector is quite useful and I found it works functionally better than I expected in most simulators what happens is as you twist it up from brake to vacate to sort of or disarm it's just off and then you can set low for low auto brake two or three to medium and high to max so you can set it for uh, takeoff for rejected takeoffs things like that so it does work surprisingly well most developers have got a nice integration gear lever it flicks up and down a similar style switch to the engine masters the real aircraft one it would actually you have to lift it or pull it out slightly and then move it this one doesn't have that option most of the switches there's, there's no sort of pulling axes on any of these switches um, they mostly just flick up and down so there you go but it is the right sort of shape obviously a miniaturized little gear lever i use that one all the time assigned very well very simple works nicely got no complaints with that now we have the speed brake lever up here. Again, the real aircraft, you actually have to push it ever so slightly down to start it off and then move it up and down, but there's no pulling or pushing axes on this one. Just slides up and down. You can add detents if you would like to. I have not. I keep it completely free. In the real aircraft, there is a slight detent at the halfway point. The reason is on A320 aircraft, the halfway point is all you'll get while the autopilot is engaged. So I use no detents on this one. I just prefer it as completely smooth. 
This is a great addition. It's the one I was most excited about, really, because it gives you a speed brake lever to hold on to whilst using them. And that way you won't forget you're using the speed brakes and therefore try and level off with them still out or something like that. Moving on now to the actual side stick. Here it is, as you can see, set up for a right hand at the moment, but you could easily set it up for the left hand by swapping those buttons over, as you can see there on the box. That being the captain pack, that's sort of the format that the captain would expect with the, the red button on the right hand side of the side stick. There are some extra buttons. A little black button on the right is not on the real aircraft and that little hat switch is not there either, but they're just there to give you some functionality for a simulator because of course the real aircraft has hundreds of buttons all over the place. So this just helps uh, translate that into a simulator sort of friendly environment. The trigger is used to talk to air traffic control in real life, but in my sim I have it set to reset forward view and I use those two buttons, the little black button on top and that upper trigger as trim buttons for aircraft that need trimming. This is the rudder, or sorry, twist axis lockout mechanism. So it has a twist axis, which you could use as rudder. I have rudder pedals, so I have the option to lock that out. In some simulators, you can assign this axis to be, for example, the nose wheel steering tiller on the ground for taxiing. So that's quite a nice feature. But you can lock it out if you don't want to use it, and then you get a more solid sort of feel to the joystick. These buttons are all slightly different with little dots on them, but I must say I find these hard to tell which one I'm pressing when I'm not looking at them. Um, the big ones are, the big two ones in the center are a little bit easier, so I end up assigning those to the more important things, but I do find them a little bit difficult to tell without, without looking. I haven't really learned the, the positions very well. <laughs> this is a little slider that can be used as a throttle. It has a little reverse detent in it. It does not really detent, you can't feel it very well, but it is a little button, so you could assign a reverse axis into there. I've never used that. I used to use it as a speed brake when I only had the thrust, thrust lever quadrant, and now I've got the add-on pack. I don't even need it for that, so I actually have that unassigned at the moment. I haven't found a good use for it, but another spare axis. Like I say, with the captain's pack, you don't need it for speed, bra speed brakes anymore. This doesn't use a USB-C cable. It's a sort of hardwiring cable that runs to a USB-A plug at the other end. I should point out that the plug on the thrust lever cable is also USB-A to connect to your computer. It's only connects to the actual thrust levers with the USB-C. There's a good range of motion on this side stick. It's, I've been really pleased with that. My old joystick was a little bit limited. This one has a really good range, which does make a, a nice feeling when you're trying to fly the aircraft. It gives you a bit more granular control of the, the airplane's controls. Looking underneath the, the thrust levers and add-ons, here you go. This is the setup. So those little black screws can be removed and then you can swap over the... Um, detents with this little panel here so you can reverse that round like I say I've sort of settled into a routine now then you've got those black ribbon cables that connect so you only have to plug in the throttle uh, all very straightforward and then there's detents in each axis which is yeah, very nice and very simple to set up and now I've found it I haven't had to adjust these at all and you can see how you could rearrange this to suit your needs as to how you want as many axes or the, if you wanted the four throttle axes assigned so in summary, my experience of using the Thrustmaster TCA Airbus equipment has been generally very good. Particular highlights for me have been the throttle quadrant. Having the detents has been incredibly useful. When you set takeoff thrust and so on, it just makes such a difference to have it locked straight into those detents. Really nice. I also have found the uh, speed brake lever very useful. And I like, just for the fun of it, having things like the parking brake assigned to it uh, have been, have been uh, particularly good fun. So it does make flying the Airbus a real treat in simulators um, and it's uh, it's been, been good fun. It is quite small, it is quite light, it is made of plastic, so there are some expectations to be set there, no doubt. Here it is working in the simulator, all very nice. Um, and as you can see, you can click it between the detents and get a good sense of what's going on. Right, now to the fun part. So as I said at the start, we will be giving away this uh, Thrustmaster TCA Captain's Pack Airbus Edition. It is only one available to give away, and the reason is Thrustmaster kindly sent it over, but as I already have the, the full set of Airbus TCA equipment, it makes no sense for me to keep it. So it'll be great that uh, hopefully uh, a viewer and someone into flight simulation can have the chance to have this uh, to fly the Airbus around. So I hope it goes to someone who will really enjoy it. The competition will be available using Gleam, so I'll provide a link in the description. You can go to that and uh, make your entries as appropriate. To make your entries, you simply follow the instructions on the Gleam website, and then it'll take you through a few different things, such as visiting the, the website or joining the Discord, and each thing can, can give you an, an entry or two, and that way, um, eventually, a random winner will be picked from all the entries provided into the, the competition. So that'll be done, supervised by me at a later date, the competition will run from the 12th of October 2021, starting at 1900 UTC, and it will run until the 19th of October 2021, when it will close at 22 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds UTC. 
Some other details, I'm afraid that this competition will only be available to United Kingdom residents. The reason is I have to pay to ship this and sort out all of the uh, the shipping and customs and so on. So for this competition, it will be unfortunately only available to UK entrants. Also, you need to be aged 15 years or over to enter the competition. And if you're under 18, please, of course, uh, get your parent or guardian's permission before entering. The full terms and conditions are available on the competition page following that link. So do please read those to make sure you're happy with those before entering the competition. I hope it's going to be a bit of fun. I hope it goes uh, to someone who will enjoy it. So I would just want to, uh, to say thank you again to Thrustmaster for giving us the opportunity to, to give this one away. There'll be plenty more live streams coming soon, uh, as well as more uh, videos, Airbus guides and so on. So do please stay tuned to the channel if you'd like to see those. Please subscribe and uh, join us on the Discord if you'd like to be engaged with the community. Otherwise, we'll see you again in one of those videos or live streams. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.